Hey everyone, the Nokia 8 Sirocco is Nokia's newest flagship. It's pretty much the only stock Android flagship you'll find, aside from the Pixel 2 phones. But with this high price tag, does it offer enough to be worth getting? I'm Angie for GSM Arena, and this is our Nokia 8 Sirocco review. The Nokia 8 Sirocco is an elegant device with a Gorilla Glass on the front and the back. Despite its more compact form factor, it's surprisingly heavy. On the positive side, the device feels durable and hasn't picked up many or any scratches during the course of a review. It can also survive a dunk in water thanks to its IP67 rating. However, despite its dashing looks, it doesn't seem to be designed with usability in mind. The buttons are some of the worst that I've felt on a phone. They're mushy and feel sharp, so they dig into your fingers every time you increase the volume or lock your phone. At least the fingerprint reader is fast and accurate, but then again, so is the Nokia 8's. The Sirocco's 5.5P OLED display has a 16x9 form factor that feels surprisingly large compared to modern phones with tall screen aspect ratios. Most content fits rather nicely and you don't have any awkward black bars. It's a QHD display, so details are sharp. Colors are vibrant too, albeit not very accurate. The phone gets plenty bright with auto brightness, but while it's easily legible outdoors, it can't compete with the better AMOLED panels. What really ruins the screen experience for us is the very noticeable color shift as you look at the phone from the side. And even if you keep it head on, the curved glass edges will make it impossible to forget this OLED screen is of an inferior quality than Samsung's. If you can learn to live with it, the screen is good on its own. The Sirocco has excellent loudness when it comes to its speaker. The sound is clean, although bass is a bit lacking. Unfortunately, you'll need a dongle if you want to use regular headphones, which again feels like a downgrade from last year's Nokia 8. The audio output quality through the jack was very good, however the max volume was not the best so you might want to keep away from high impedance headphones with this one. With the 3200 milliamp battery, the Sirocco's battery life is what we'd call only average. It earned a 77 hour endurance rating in our propriety tests. And if you're wondering, you'll get around 9 hours of screen on time while browsing the web. Thankfully the phone supports wireless charging and there's a bundled quick charger that gets you 49% of the battery in half an hour. The Sirocco comes with the latest Android Oreo and is part of the Android One program, which means updates for the next two years. This is one of the biggest draws as it's the only flagship level device that comes with stock Android and such consistent updates, aside from the pixels of course. In addition to a regular always on display, the Sirocco has the glance screen, which detects movements and times out after around 30 seconds to save you battery life. With the exception of the camera app, which is designed by Nokia, phones come with Google stock apps. You can replace most of them if they're not your thing, but then again, most stock Android fans like stock Android apps. With 128GB of storage, there's plenty of space, but there's no card slot and the Android One program doesn't allow for unlimited original quality backups, unlike the Pixels. The Nokia 8 Sirocco comes with 6 gigs of RAM and a Snapdragon 835 chipset, which is strange considering all the other phones at its price point that have newer silicon. On benchmarks, it compares the OnePlus 5T and the Nokia 8 from last year. So phones like the S9 and the OnePlus 6 are about 30% faster. In day-to-day -day life, however, you're not really going to notice a big difference. And with all the RAM, multitasking is a breeze. These days, newer chipsets are less about lag and stutter and more about better network speeds, better AI, and better camera capabilities. The Sirocco's camera setup looks good on paper. There is a 12 megapixel normal camera with a f1.75 aperture plus a secondary 13 megapixel telephoto with a f2.6 aperture. This is where the Sirocco clearly beats out its predecessor, the Nokia 8. The main camera has sharp photos with good contrast. Colors are vivid, but not over the top. However, the dynamic range isn't the best and auto HDR doesn't always turn on when you need it. The 2 times optical zoom produces photos which are softer than most other flagship phones, but it's still miles better than digital zoom. In low light, the main camera snaps ok images, but it has a tendency to underexpose dark scenes. This is also where you see a bigger difference between the Nokia 8 Sirocco, the Pixel 2 XL, and the Nokia 7 Plus. The Sirocco is a little bit sharper than the Pixel, but it loses out on some detail, like the lines in Darwin's face. The Nokia 7 Plus does surprisingly well in comparison to the 2, although it is much noisier. When shooting 4K videos, you're limited to 30fps, but colors are vivid, there's low noise, and details are sharp. However, there's no EIS, and footage comes out a bit shaky. When you drop the resolution to 1080p, the stabilization is pretty good, but of course you lose a lot of detail. The 5 megapixel front camera produces good selfies in bright conditions. It also has a bokeh mode that does a decent job of separating the background from the foreground. The Nokia 8 Sirocco is a really beautiful, well-built phone, but it's a tough sell in such a crowded market. At its current price point, it's a little bit more expensive than the Pixel 2 XL, 
and way more expensive than the OnePlus 6 that just came out with a great camera and a newer chipset. And as things stand right now, the Nokia 8 Sirico doesn't have a lot to show that would justify this price difference. It has a bluish tint on the screen, horrendous side buttons, an uninspiring camera performance, and battery life that is only okay. There's not much consumers can cling to aside from brand loyalty to Nokia. So unless you're getting a serious discount, this is not my top recommendation at this price point. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button down below and subscribe and hit the bell icon to get our latest tech reviews as soon as they're out. See you next time.